Hi, I'm Angela McCollwa, writer of The Blessed Girl. Is there anyone live right now? Hello, I've got one or two people that have just joined. Sorry for the bloopers in the first round. So I'll start by just reading from my latest novel. It's called The Blessed Girl. I uh, will just read a short excerpt um, just to give you a taste. Uh, I hear you saying, hi, boy, Angela, did the alcohol cue confuse you? I'm not saying anything. It's just that I'm drinking from something. It may or may not be alcohol. I'm joking. So anyway, let me start again and try and redeem myself. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm reading from my latest novel. It's called The Blessed Girl. Um, some of you may be familiar with it. Um, I think it's best to read from the intro because it always kind of gives a good all round perspective on the novel. Um, it starts thus. My name is Bunte Tau. The first thing you'll notice about me is my honeycomb complexion, my almond shaped eyes, the mole on the right corner of my mouth and my luscious lips. From a very young age, I knew that I was exceptionally beautiful. I saw it in the way that adults looked at me, the compliments showered upon my mother for my good looks, the way that grown men would stop and gape at me. At school, teachers would give me a free pass on tasks that were expected of other children. From the moment I was born, my parents knew that I was destined to go far, purely because of the way that I looked, hence they named me Buntle, the beautiful one. It doesn't hurt that my surname Tao means lion. I'm a beautiful and fierce lioness. Watch out, world. Uh, people don't understand that when your physical attributes are the most exceptional things about you, the sun orbits around your world instead of the other way around. If I were given the option to spend a lifetime as Albert Einstein or as Marilyn Monroe, I'd choose Marilyn every time, drugs and all. I think that despite some of her bad choices, she still had much better quality of life than that weird looking science, uh, chemist or was he a scientist? Oh, whatever. I love girls who, love, who, who know how to make the most of their looks. Marilyn Monroe was the original blessy, and you can quote me on that one. When I realized that most people were willing to let me get away with just about anything, I learned to manipulate and no, take advantage of situation. And as collateral damage, I suppose I also learned to take advantage of people. I don't really care how people judge me, it's mostly the ones who haven't made anything of their lives anyway. Average people tend to be average at just about everything they do, and exceptional people tend to excel at at least one or two things in life. Um, the skill that I have honed and perfected from a very young age is that of charming people to get my own way. Um, I have a few minutes to spare, but I'm not supposed to be here. Oh, sorry, PC, we're sorry, bye. Anyway, so let me continue. At school, when I didn't feel like attending classes, I would get a boy in class to take notes for me and even go as far as to come through to my house to update me on everything that I had missed in class. When I realized how easy it was to convince people, especially boys, um, that to do what I wanted, I decided that that was how I was going to cruise my way through life. Um, people think that my lack of academic prowess makes me dumb, but they don't understand that I'm smart smarter than, than them. I apply the 80-20 principle in the way that I live my life. 20% effort for 80% reward. This philosophy has ensured that I notch up the kind of successes that most people may, my age can only dream of. One day I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to get someone to write a book about my philosophy on life. I think there's a lot of poor souls that would benefit from my simple yet highly effective outlook. I'm currently 24 years old. I own two businesses, a fully paid up penthouse on Grayston Drive in Santon, right at the heart of Johannesburg swanky metropolis, and I drive a luxury German vehicle, a convertible no less. Not bad for a girl from Mamelodi. yep, that's my hood, baby. I barely scraped through my trick, and I've never spent a day in a university lecture hall. Um, what I lack in academic qualifications, I'm more than make up for in my sweet smile. Somebody's saying, if you read The 30th Candle, can you please address me as Linda throughout the session? Of course I will. <laughs> Why not? If you wanted me to read from The 30th, 30th Candle, I should have actually done that. 
um so that is just a very short excerpt from the blessed girl um it chronicles the life of a young lady uh, by the name of Muntletau, who's obsessed with you know the so-called finer things in life she lives a very glamorous life and it's founded by three men um the one one of the men is called uh papa jeff he is her oldest and dearest or most prized blessy because she credits him with having introduced her to this life you know this blessed life it's a charmed existence according to her but i think the book not only chronicles just uh Bundle's outlook and 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 the drama and the glitz and all of that but it also you know delves deeper into these lives that we are constantly exposed to um you know so-called instagram live lives which is actually quite um appropriate now that we are on instagram on this talk so what it also does is that it just explores kind of the layers behind this lifestyle and it juxtaposes what we see and take for granted as reality and what really happens kind of behind the scenes because you know Bunkley, as much as when she posts she will post the luxury penthouse uh the the the, the fur coats or whatever it is um she is still a real person and she has kind of a lived experience that is much more um poignant than what she lets the world see and i think that is true of a lot of or a lot of people living this life but also even ordinary people because i've been kind of reflecting on this um what we put on social media and what is really happening behind the scenes with with most of us and the medium you know it kind of lends itself to that because it's all about the filters and you know trying to give the world the sense that you are okay you are thriving not just okay but thriving and it's actually quite interesting living in this lockdown period where we are all now having to kind of face life as it is um and kind of reflecting on the kind of things that we do post about and what we choose to put out in the world so uh i'm not a big talker i see quite a few comments i see black porcelain hiya <laughs> saying we really enjoyed blessed girl i'm so happy to hear that from you you blessed and talented girl um 30th candle anyone want to post a question about 30th candle or even the 30, the, the blessed girl maybe something that you've always wanted to ask me okay we've got zuki swa coming online now she hates my guts because i was being a bunch i was being very ditzy couldn't get into the session so let's wait for her and uh let me let me let me be ready for your rest i was saying to the viewers that you are so mad at me and i was acting like a typical bunke like being ditzy all over the place <laughs> yes you were. so i hope you're gonna now, that on first me. question <laughs> on bunke yeah how much research did you have to do did you have to be a blessy were you a blessy at some time or? Was I a blessy or a blessed girl? Because a blessy is the one that sponsored the life. Oh, the blessed girl, blessed girl, blessed girl. No, that's a blessy. Um, a bless yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh yes, she's a blessy. Uh, did I have to be a blessy? No, but did I join um, a social media network called, what was it called? Blesser Finder. Yes, I did. <laughs> How was that? How is that? <laughs> so, uh, Blesser Finder. My friend, you never know how active it is now. How? <laughs> research, research. Remember that it's humble. Research. No, <laughs> man. <laughs> you must share the news. <laughs> so I joined Blesser Finder uh, because I wanted to meet people in the lifestyle, both the, the, the Blessers and the Blessies, right? Um, and then guess what? And you're going to crack up about this. So... I obviously DM them to say, look, I want to interview some people. If you can give me access, you know, I said this to the admin and he's like, yeah, no, it's fine. I just don't know how, how well you're going to fare with regards to the men in the lifestyle because most of them are married. Um, but you certainly can like, you know, shoot your shot kind of thing. So I went on the site and then, um, I asked him if he could, 
speak, you know, kind of reach out to some people so that I can just do my prelim preliminary research. Um, and then I, oh, she says research in inverted commas. Of course it was. So after some time, I'm on this network and then I get DM'd by my very own potential blesser. He was a taxi driver, Zukiswa. <laughs> or maybe taxi owner. Oh, okay. So, 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 so you know the person say... lifestyle has levels, right? Huh? Yeah. So, yeah, you know it's got like, levels. What? Like level what? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the entry level. <laughs> I was supposed to ask for eight five. No, level level five level five is the top top one, right? Because level five level is six. Like, level six is where you live winter's lifestyle, now. where people excuse me? Yes, that's level six. And apparently there's even um like a a, a certain grading of the players C's. So if you're a triple A, you've got like you are everything. You've got I don't know the the silicone boobs and the implants and you've you've got a, a decent social media profile like a big following and all of that and so all the rich guy or all, all the yeah, blessers kind of yeah you're an yeah you're an influencer but also it means that your ranking amongst these blessers is higher so all the guys with the real money want to be with you it's all very warped and yeah. Remy is not here, but he did say, Troy, that he was uh, giving you his um, trolling notes. So feel free to troll as he does. Troll is gone, Troy. I'm ready for you. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> right. Uh, I think for the sake of this discussion, um, I know that Frankie has been looking for a blesser. So is there like, what does he need? What are, what are the notes? What are the things that... Um, okay, so he's looking for it. level what? Which level of blesser? No, no, no. Like, he's he, wants, for... he wants level seven. Oh. Ah! <laughs> what does he look like, first of all? He's got a... You know, I mean, it depends. He's what does he look like? Look. Cause... Frankie has a huh? daddy look. He's got a daddy look. And so he, he wants to be pepper. blessed. He wants to be blessed. And he wants to be blessed. There should be an edge limit to being blessed. Well, I mean, salt and pepper hair, I mean, already you're like scraping at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Frankie, this chick is trolling you, hey? <laughs> I mean, like, Daddy, I mean it's, it's game over. It's time up. Let's start at the very bottom. Start at the you bottom Frankie. of the barrel. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, sorry, Frankie. Hey, Max. How you Angela, doing? are you using telecom Wi-Fi? Yes, I am. Is, it, is there a problem? I actually came it's to terrible. the office to do this because I thought it would be better. Is it terrible? Oh, I should, oh my I should God, my use my Wi-Fi at home. It's even like making you like 20 years older. Oh, no. Now they're really going to believe I'm, I'm, I'm also scraping at the bottom of the barrel. That's terrible. <laughs> now I'm just like, is it fair for me to even call you Gogo -Go at this point? <laughs> Because you can't tell me the same age. No, no, man. I just read an excerpt that said I'm 24 years old. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, yes, Max. Bottom lives matter. Um, <laughs> Good luck resisting Zugisa's so luck. Yes, Good I luck. I've, I've got a question for you because this oh, is somebody wants to. It's not yeah. just Doctor and Dobo. This is also my favorite, my favorite book of yours. My favorite, favorite, favorite. Book. Oh, I mean, yes. I do love the about... So can we talk? Can we oh, talk you know, I didn't bring a copy of the Thirtieth Candle, and I'm hearing so many people um wanting me to. Uh, that explains your internet. Oh, connection issues. Yeah, sorry, man. Um, I was saying about the Thirtieth Candle that um, you know, it was it was an interesting book to write because it was. I was going through, you know, that period of, well, it felt like a seismic shift for me because my 20s were very kind of carefree and crazy and happy. Uh, and so when I wrote it, it was, it was mainly for catharsis, if I have to be honest. And so I heard somebody saying that they wanted to ask a question about um, the 30th candle and I was interested uh, I don't know if that person is on yes do you have a particular yes, target a particular audience target that you write for, that you write for. Her name um, is I think to the resident hello Dr. Ndovo hi Dr. Ndovo okay who do I write for 
I think mainly, to be honest, I guess I would write for people who look like me mostly, like black women, because, and, and the only reason I say that is because obviously the subject matter that I tackle um, is, 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 is the kind of life and, 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 and experience that I have undergone. So, so I am very much one of those from the school of thought that you write what you know. Um, although now having written five novels, I would like to explore, like, you know, kind of uh, move a, a little bit away, be adventurous and move away from my comfort zone. But yeah, mainly I write what, what I know and I write the kind of experiences that most young women and older women, now that we over 40, Zukiswa, will relate. I don't know what you're talking you know? about. <laughs> <laughs> Most I deny, women I deny, will relate. I deny. Anyway, why uh, okay, well, let's hear. You just mentioned this getting out of your comfort zone. Poetry or cocaine? Troy! Troy is asking me what I would prefer poetry or cocaine. Yeah, we'll just we'll prefer thing. poetry or cocaine. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I've never tried cocaine, but I think that for me to be able to express myself through poetry, I would probably need something to kind of nudge me in the right direction uh, because so I think I'm a very literal cocaine. kind of writer. <laughs> you'll be like, you'll be like, and then you'll be is like, this recorded? Is this being recorded? recorded? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Okay, let's tell the doctor and who wants to know. On. Was, yeah, was there a reason why you didn't delve deeper into your character's thinking pattern on the 30th panel? I was left wanting on every chapter. You were left wanting on every chapter. I think it's very difficult writing from uh, multiple levels uh, from, uh, of point, like different points of view. Um, so, for instance, I think, uh, I don't know if she's read, I think she's the one who said she's not going to read The Blessed Girl. But anyway, if you've read The Blessed Girl, and it was quite a, an interesting experience for me as a writer as well, because I've never written um, from the first person. Um, and so what I was able to do with Bunte is that I, I was in her head all the time. And so perhaps that's why um, the character is so layered, like that you, that people would give would come would get back to me with with, with uh, comments like you know I love I love to hate her or I couldn't decide whether I loved her or I hated her uh, because you really really got to walk in her shoes and I think the challenge and I suppose this is one of those things where you have to push yourself as a writer and and keep on improving on is that when you're writing from multiple perspectives you want to give each of the character as much voice as possible um, and. For me, somebody who writes with a very pacey style, I'm very, like, my, my, my writing is, is usually very um, fast-paced. Like, you know, the action tends to happen very quickly um, and, and the plot kind of moves um, in, 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 it, it moves, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very quick, it's usually very, very quick plot. And so maybe because of that, because of the need to drive story, you know, um, that's why I, you, you, you may feel that this, the characters may have, been explored more. Uh, I've got a question for you. Um, you know, you just mentioned earlier that you're thinking about pursuing a different. I know you just finished a manuscript. Um, you announced it on another platform, but uh, and so we've got a new book coming. But I do remember that you've been uh, going on about a very futuristic book that you're planning to do. How's that going? That manuscript. Ooh, yeah. You know, it was going to be. Very science, uh, it's kind of like science fiction, but not the, the childlike kind of or adult, like AI type of, of science fiction. It was more a politically uh, driven um, science fiction story. It was kind of what, it, it, I actually started writing it before, um, what's that, uh, Black Panther. I kind of started writing it before Black Panther because it imagined uh, in Africa that had kind of really surpassed um, other nations in terms of, you know, scientific progress and really, um, and, and really coming up with the solutions that are urgent uh, right now uh, in society, like the, the you know, uh, the, 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 the challenges that we have with our environment, what we've done to it, um, race, it, it, it dealt on, on racial politics, 
uh, it, it dealt on so many different aspects of, of the very big issues that we're tackling right now. And uh, because a lot of it, a lot of um, the advancements that we as a continent would have, w w would have made in my book anyway, um, I needed to really get into a deep scientific research space, which I didn't have the um, facilities or resources to pursue to the extent that I wanted to pursue it so that the book would have gravitas and would have the kind of weight um, that you'd expect of such a novel. So I, I, that was the biggest challenge for me with, with regards to that. I still dream of writing such a book, uh, but I would need a lot more time than I, I, I unfortunately have in my hands because I'm, I juggle so many different balls, you know this. Um, and I would need a lot of resources because I would need to really speak to people in the STEM kind of community to, to really get into the, the, head, the, head, the, the head space and really kind of bring out um, like the solid kind of science, science behind um, the ideology that I have in mind for, for that futuristic, you know, book. Okay, Dr. Ndovu wants to know, and I'm not referring to you as Linda, I'm Mazu Linda. Yes, I agree, Patricia. Sorry, a shout out to Patricia Koro, who did a really amazing performance of The Blessed Girl in Kenya, thanks to you. Um, it was an amazing experience. It actually made me dream about a possible, you know, Blessed Girl, uh, you know, stage. Uh, performance or play or something like that. So just thanks for that shout out to Patricia, who was really amazing. Yeah. In her portrayal of point, if you remember. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. She was amazing. Another question. Uh, this, this one comes from Mohale and she wants to know, okay, we all know, and I think she just wants other people to know, the type of um, kinky prison sex you had when you were doing research for Red Ink, which is her favorite. <laughs> Me to this. <laughs> so Mahalia wants to know, Mahalia probably has a crush on my serial killer friend, uh, sorry, who's, who, uh, okay, so Red Ink, just a little bit about Red Ink. Red Ink is about Lucy Kangule, who's this young uh, former journalist who um, agrees to profile or write a, a, a biography about a, a prison in, 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 inmate who happens to be a convicted serial killer. So she starts visiting this man and she then, um, you know, has various very, very chill, chilly encounters but like she's not sure if it's with him or with another force because this person is still in prison, but people are kind of dying around her in, in her real world. Um, so to answer Mohale, so I had to visit uh, a, a well-known serial killer who's still serving time in jail uh, to this day for, for what he did. So yeah, so that was, the prison sex was non-existent. Sorry, Mohale, sorry, Zukisa. <laughs> You and I know uh, not differently, but that's okay, my friend. We say nothing. <laughs> Between the two, you refused us. to go visit him. He wanted, to, he wanted to meet you. So I know. You, know, you could have had the Christmas sex with him. him wow. <laughs> You've been keeping him from me. Max Lobby wants to know uh, how can you be more anglophone writers be known in the Francophonie area? And he's discovering wonderful people here. How do we get to know each other better? Without, without probably having sex, but just, you know, like, our works. You follow Zukiso Awana. You follow Zukiso Awana. That's how you do it. <laughs> so, uh, no, no. But how do we get to know more about each other? I suppose this platform is one of the, the best platforms uh, thus far that have been created for us to be able to interact and engage with each other and know more about each other's work. Um, but... I think it's important to to ensure that our books are distributed on the continent, you know. And you know, Zuki Iswa, for instance, has a continental imprint uh, that she launched as a publisher, and she's already we printed. So she printed this book with me. 
um, which is called We The Sky. It's written by Mukoma Wangugi. And, you know, she's going to be distributing it um, in various parts of the continent. So I guess, you know, it's baby steps, but we have to form communities that facilitate not only just you know, us getting published, but also us being read outside of our small pockets of the continent. And we have to create platforms like these to engage so that also readers get to know and get to be exposed to, if you're South African, you can't just, you know, be happy to have read Angela Makola or Spio Mahala or Zukisawana. You should be curious enough to also want, you know, to find out what else is being written on our continent. This wants to know, how can our works have sex? How can our works have sex with each other? How can, how can our works have sex with one another? Our works. Our works have communion. How can they do have this. sexual congress with one another? Men. Okay, so this is men on top. This is. I'm being silly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we can cross pollinate characters. I mean, I can borrow a character. I can borrow a character. I want to. I want to borrow Baba Segi. I want to borrow Baba Segi. I want to take Baba Segi to meet Bonke. You know, I'm sorry, Bonke Town from the Baba best Segi couple. Be I think they're like the best know? couple ever. Yeah. What? Okay. And somebody wants to know what's your process for transitioning between protagonists. How do you give each enough time, and how do you know? I would. I would say this is particularly in reference to uh, the Black Widow Society, I would imagine. So how, how do you do that? How do you give each enough time? I think there's always a subconscious decision to choose a, a protagonist. So even if you've got multiple strong characters, I think sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it isn't. But for instance, like even not, like if, if I think of Black Widow Society, even though you had this triumvirate of three powerful women, um, in my mind, there is somebody who kind of stood head and shoulders above the other characters in terms of, you know, driving story. And for me, that is uh, Talula. So, uh, so, so if I were to think about who drove the storyline, that would be Talula and Mzwake, who's kind of an unintentional he's kind of an unintentional protagonist so i think it's about deciding where well i, I mean i mean we all write differently and we all have different processes but i always think about like what is my end goal where does this all like i think about the beginning and i think about the ending and then and so the big so so if i know that this story um chronicle of these particular characters you know so like the, the main story is being driven by a talula a mzwake and a noloazi you know so already uh then then i need to know so what is going to happen in the end how how is this all uh what's it going to culminate and and once i think about that um then I'm able to, so I've kind of the, I've got the bare bones of where I'm going with all of this. And then that, that kind of decides whose, whose story, whose story is it then? Like then, so, so if I've decided that, that, okay, I want to know this and this is what's going to happen with the characters, then it's like, okay, so this is, this is Talula's story um, because this is, this is how Talula's uh, journey is, is, is going to, is, is, this is where Talula's journey is headed. And then, and so on with the other characters. So it's not a, I don't think it's something that you really have to, you know, kind of bang your head against the wall about. Um, but as long as you've kind of got an idea and, and, and it doesn't mean that your story, your, the, the manuscript is going to end in the same way that you had envisaged when you started. I've really, I don't know, Zuki, so you could, you can also share your own journey with this, but it's rare for me that a story ends exactly the way that I had envisaged it would end because the thing with characters, especially um, character driven stories, which I think most of mine are as well, is that the characters do take on a life of their own and they kind of do dictate their own fate in the end. So you as the writer kind of take um, second place, you kind, of, you kind of step back and you allow the story, the, the characters to own their own um, storyline. Okay, we've asked enough serious questions for the platform for the day. Chicklet or dicklet? Yay! Chicklet, always. Okay. Uh, 
our resident troll, Remy, is not here. So Max has asked a question, and I'll throw it over to you. How would it catch you? And Troy is busy just LOLing, just trying. You can't just LOL your way out of this, okay? Ah, uh ah, -uh. focus on Max's question. <laughs> Hiya. How does it catch you and whip you? <laughs> what? How does it catch you and whip you? Who? Max. Who? How does it catch Who? you and whip you? How? Who? Hadi. How does no. he catch me? I said, how does Max catch you and whip you? So Who's that Max? Ma Max is the person in the audience there. How does he catch he you and whip you? had to burn a book. If you had to burn a book, which would you? Shit, there's a shitty book that I read recently, hey? I'm trying to think. Okay, Debra wants to know why the sex worker, sex worker, Debra, no prostitute, why the sex worker documentary in the 30th candle? Why well, the sex worker documentary in the 30th candle? Yes, there is. Uh, what you call it? The one that Linda does. You know? Oh, when she ends up. Oh. Yeah. So what about it? Yeah, he wants to know why you did it. You know? Because it was interesting. Know. Exactly, and it worked with a story. If I had okay, to but... use a whip on a writer, who would it be and why? Yeah. Um, 100 Years of Solitude, Gabriela. Gabriela Macri. I know he's okay. late. Okay, but and I would, I would wanna... And if you had to be whipped by a writer, who would it be and why? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be with Pai Mukobi. All right. Uh, okay, you didn't answer the burning book, did you? If you had to burn a book, which would it be? Um, please, shit, please, some um, of our best friends read self-help books. Don't talk about them. Oh, yeah. No. You know which one, eh? Yeah. I don't know if it was ever published. That one by D D DJ Zinke and... Um, what was that book about? <laughs> <laughs> It was published and it's so more copies than yours. It's so more than all your books, baby. No, it didn't. It didn't. I'm it serious. Was before. You guys, I'm, you're trapping me here, hey? I'm just not trapping you. I'm going to live out the rest of my life after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pop into these people. Muko. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a D I'm a fan of DJs and sorry but did you buy the book did you buy the book no I didn't but I know a lot of people who did no 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 uh, SK Ndovu says she's a fan of, D of DJs and by the way I want to know if she, if, she, if she bought the book she likes DJs and says music she didn't say anything about her writing DJs in case the Mlilo guy yes sure it is the, DJs in case the Mlilo uh, girl Mm. <laughs> Pelissa, Pelissa wants to know your journey. <laughs> They're laughing at my pronunciation of Bukoma's name. Okay, fine. Make, make I part know, of I, me. I can't, fine. You, can't, you can't read something phonetic that's right in front of me. I can't I'm like, Bukoma I want go. I hate you guys so much. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sure to... after he whips me, I'm sure I know how to pronounce his name properly. After he whips me, after he whips me good, I'll be like, oh, I'll pronounce his name properly. So, patience, please. <laughs> I will know how to pronounce that name, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, a sort of serious question. Pelissa wants to know, 
what's your journey towards what was your journey towards publishing please so firstly she had to go to the prison and do whatever she did with with moses and then she can take it over from there that was it yeah, yeah i went to the prison with uh, i went to meet moses in prison i wrote the book as I, I wrote like um a first draft of uh, moses sitwell's biography who who's the serial killer that my 29 what 20 something year old self wanted to 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 chronicle whose life i wanted to chronicle i don't know why i chose a serial killer of all people but anyway so i did that and i met a publisher i told him about my manuscripts which was like in the very early phases and then he said and then no no but by this time actually i I had gotten into a very bad space with my serial killer subjects um, because if you're dealing with a serial killer, um, there's a level of sociopathy going on there. And so that part of it kind of crept into our relationship, me and him as my subject. And I decided to to abandon the project because it was it wasn't going anywhere um so this publisher said to me no you have to fictionalize that's actually quite a great basis for a book just fictionalize it which i did um then then i sent it to a publisher who seemed to like it asked for five chapters sent the five chapters they didn't like it they decided it wasn't for them I thought, I'm giving up. I'm not going to do this. And then, um, because I hate rejection, as my exes will know. <laughs> and I slashed the ties. I'm joking. So anyway, so I was, so I hated the rejection. And I thought, ah, you know what? Uh, it is what it is. I'm never going to get published. Let me just go on with the rest of my life. Um, but I had joined up. I had, I had. writing group and um, the facilitator had actually unbeknownst to me had sent it to Pam McMillan who are still my, my, my publishers to this day and um, yeah they loved it they, they, they wanted to see more and I started writing and yeah that's how that's how I became like that's how my debut novel actually happened okay it's important to tell you this uh, because these guys have just highlighted it first uh, as throw away your password in a live chat after he whips you. So I'm not sure that that's, that's the guy you want, you want to whip you. Secondly, as Maza highlights, after he whips you, he'll call you Pumpkin. <laughs> so yeah. And Pumpkin is the name of his chicken. One of his chickens. <laughs> Well, do you know what? Like, as far as terms of endearments go, I mean, pumpkin is actually not that bad. I don't care that a chicken has been named a pumpkin before. I got, I, I got blessed with such a, a, I mean, such an endearing, endearing, endearing name, you know. So I'm fine. I'll take. No, but it. I'll if, take it. If if you if you, if you had a chicken called pumpkin, would you would you roast it or would you mash it? Mm. What would you do with it? I'd raise it as a pet. I'd, I'd raise it as a pet. You, Sha. Your inner white game. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I, I have to call I something pumpkin. To do the like, that's friends. so endearing. How do you then proceed to kill or slaughter that poor pet? If it's, called, you if know? it's called pumpkin, obviously it needs to be, what you call it, it needs to be eaten. No, man, don't you call your lover? What do you call your lover? What do you call Well, I James? don't call, you call them call food because I don't want to eat them. I don't have cannibalistic tendencies. No, man, I've been to your house. I know what you call him. You call him potato. I don't call him pumpkin. Pie. No, I don't call any pie call anything. Pie for who? For what? For the why? Anyway, okay, another oh. serious question. Yabona Mandla. This girl is talking about having a chicken for a pet. You can't call something or someone pumpkin and then proceed to kill them and eat them. Like, that is just, that's insane. Who does that? Guys, who raised you guys? Who raised you? It absolutely makes sense. If you call somebody sweetie pie, then you must eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Little guys like call their girlfriends for life. They call people call people call the people.
people that they love tofolax they call them uh, yeah, uh my, my chicken licket it doesn't mean the way i eat them <laughs> Okay, so I don't want to, my writing process. Somebody's being serious, guys, okay? Yeah. It's the last yeah, day, Baba. Yeah, potato pie with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a potato pie. Plus, I'm trying to cook potatoes. I don't want I'm to cook you potatoes. Call it potato That's pie. pie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, oh you're finding a serious question from Degwa. Um, your writing process. After this, I'm gonna need some wine. Deborah is asking serious questions. Hey, South Africa has its first alcohol like delay. Yeah, we've been seeing what's with the so, light. Yes, uh, no, no, no. Um, my writing process look, I just find a quiet space, preferably at my house or at a coffee shop. I'm not a fancy pen you know, keeping it real type of writer, dotting down things on a piece of paper and a notepad. I wish I were that kind of writer because it just sounds so romantic and wonderful. Um, but I am that person. I just grab my laptop. I take my laptop everywhere with me, including the bathroom. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I, I just get on with it. Hmm? <laughs> Too you much mean? information about the bathroom. Well, I mean, you asked. You asked. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, okay, Dr. Dr. The, uh, what's South Africans are often accused of being detached from the African continent. Do you, see, do you think South African authors. Eh? Yeah. Literatures um, that, will governor, that will governize Africans. I, I think. Makola, uh, Makola, Makola, before you answer. Makola, before you answer. Dr. Dr. I'm here. I'm this material for a PhD thesis. So now I would say be careful how you answer. Answer it with K. How? But so why am I being um, warned here? I'm just warning you. <laughs> is, is Dr. Ndogu's PhD on uh, the youth in the vow? Friends. Dr. Ndogu, ne? Excuse me. Yeah, is he like the other? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what is going on now? Answer no, the is, question. It's never that serious. Do I feel that I have a responsibility to? galvanize the rest of the continent. I think I've got a responsibility to write stories that ring true to my experience as a writer, as a black woman, as an African. Um, but, and, and, and I have a responsibility to be true to whatever it is that moved me to put pen to paper because I've discovered, what? what? Well, try that same dog with a dog might be a chicken doctor. <laughs> and then my so I'm trying to be serious here. Okay. <laughs> I can't with you guys. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, answer. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Galap? Okay. Dr. Tango, are you happy about Zukiswa? Uh, you know, just this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Makanaka, we, we don't appreciate this uh, ethnic stereotypes about sending lightning, you know? The lightning bomb that I see. Hey, I hope I, please protect me. Please protect me. No, it's okay. <laughs> Isn't your husband from the public? <laughs> yeah, hey. So you're good. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I'm very good. Nobody has asked that nice question yet. Um, all right. So, important question. How? No, I feel for people. <laughs> I feel sorry for myself. 
Okay. So, 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 important, important question. Yeah. Um, right. If you had fire out of coming out of your anus every time you were, you know, emotional. it happens every time. So, no, but I'm so saying you have to be a bit more every specific. Time were, every time you were having like emotional extremes and you had fire coming out of your anus, how would you stop everybody else from seeing it? And how would you stop it from burning your? Your, your 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 dress the back of your dress or your pants well it's happened believe it or not this happens a lot to me right <laughs> so <laughs> what it happens a lot to me but as you okay. rightly said that i'm married to a man from limpopo so what he gave me when he realized that I, I have this problem is like, there's this lightning conductor, but you can only get it from Limpopo. It's a Limpopo lightning conductor. And then it works like, you know how when somebody sends like lightning to you from Limpopo, like when they send it to like your desk or your house, you know, you have to take no, like, you have to take a note, like you have to take a novel that's about like a hundred and, 50 to, to 200 pages long. And then you have to open it right in the middle like this. And then it acts as a lightning conductor. Mm -hmm. So with the fire in the anus, mm. you take like a motivational book of mm. any writer of your choice. Mm. And then you sit on it. <laughs> right? Okay. Why are you being so serious? No, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. So there you have it, Bissy. You wanted to know what book she would burn. Now you know. Motivational books. The answer. And you sit on it. it. Okay. And you sit. All right, no. you, know, you know which motivational book is very good at extinguishing that fire? It's Rich mm. Dad, Poor Dad. You put it on your ass. Mm. And then, like, gone. Fire gone. So, yeah. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> there shall there shall no more be shall be no more jokes about anuses, you know, in this festival except tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, and there we're serious as heart attack. Um, we're very serious. Okay, um, right. The theme of the the theme of the festival is future, present, past. Which one do you think you are, or your writing is? It's present. Okay. Oh, Ndegwa says be inspired before you expire. <laughs> no, man, aspire to inspire. And Troy says aspire to expire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fire on the self help book. You speak. That's where the fire is. Okay, and then the other question regarding Angela's work. Oh, by the way, you will all be interested to know that um, the Blessed Girl is available in the UK and has been shortlisted. Is it shortlisted for the for the Yuma Award? Or what, what is it? What's the fancy name? Um. Yeah. Okay. So for now. Uh, the long list has been announced. The short list is going to be announced on the 4th of June. Okay, do you know who the judges are? I have no idea. What do you want to do? Okay. Wanna send something? No, do you want to send something from Limpopo? Research who the judges are, you know. If we see anybody who's kind of... Do you want to send something from Limpopo? Do you think we should send something from Limpopo to one of the of judges? Course. To all of, of the course. judges? Of course. Do you think I should send that thing that... that 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 the, the lightning thing or no not okay. the lightning thing you know you only send the lightning thing to a contrarian you know no else. no but the lightning thing can also shift perceptions eh? oh okay you can send lightning yeah, to shift us, or to sway direction hmm? busy i'm an african girl <laughs> in, a, in a developing world how would i bribe them with what money <laughs> Do you think BC and Dr. Ndovu would fit in Black Widow society? Of course they will. 
No, she wouldn't. Dr. Ndlovu wouldn't fit in Black Widow society. Dr. Ndlovu would probably be like in red ink, I think. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I think she'd be like red ink. Yeah, I think she'll be in red ink. I think she's that friend. You know? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, any other questions? Okay. James never thought he'd ever hear Pepe Minambo quoted in a literary festival. Ah, when did we quote? Why are you shouting? <laughs> The session is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, last, Dr. Question. last question. Okay, so here's what you missed, um, uh, and I'm going to send you some screenshots. On, on Saturday night, uh, you missed Jose Agualusa, but importantly, you missed his son, Carlos. Who's going to be in a movie that I shall write? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the title to, of the movie? It? No, I haven't written it, but I'm, I'm writing it for him. <laughs> I'll send you his photo and you'll see why. You know, all those okay. Mexican sorts, where they have a character called Alejandro. Oh, he's the like telenovelas, Alejandro. yeah. Yeah, he's huh? like Alejandro and five. Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> Carlos is the past, present, and future. Present, the first is real. He can't, arriba, just, be, arriba, arriba. He, he huh? can't just be. He can't just be the future. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> all right. And thanks a lot, my friend. We thank shall, you, my darling, shall, and thanks for facilitating the festival. Please. When you so is there going to be a season two? Because I hear that this is season one. So what's happening? Is there going to drugs? be a season two? Are you on drugs? What? Season three. I asked you for season one back in, <gasps> back in March. Yeah, no, because I know I'm horrible at these uh, video things, man. In front of the people. So season five, six, There's season eight. four. There's season four? Mm-hmm. When does it start? It starts on the 29th of June and it ends on the 6th of February. You heard it here first, I right? gonna get, Is it going to be blessed by the Department of Arts and Culture of South Africa amongst other departments of Arts and Culture things. across the continent? Uh, We're supposed to be doing the things. If you cook the pots, we get blessed, we do the thing. Eh? No, I think I'm wanting them to realize that we've already acknowledged them in advance <laughs> for their sponsorship. Uh, no, no, no. No, Dr. Ndogu, you actually have that, that one wrong. No, Loazi did not after the fallout. As far as she was still a secret. Nobody knew at that point in time that they were still dating or whatever it is. That she was having a side with that guy. So, yeah, no. They hadn't had a, oh, had a fallout you. with the guy, but the friend didn't know. So, oh, Dr. Ndogu, go and read back the story. Yeah, please reread re 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 the story. Yeah? After you're done, when you press end, please save to IGTV. Yes, madam. Uh, All right. I'll catch you on WhatsApp and I will still right, cool. yell at you about being late. So I haven't made a, a complete balls up of this, hey? I was really worried, hey? Yeah. No, you I thought I was going to make a complete balls up of it. Hmm? Oh, you did. No, but I, I, I managed did. to redeem myself. I redeemed myself. And not entirely. Put money in my account. Thanks. Love Thanks. you too. Thanks, everybody, for taking part. All right, guys. Cheers. Bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Okay. Sure. <laughs>